you. Thanks for coming. Um, yeah, I'm talking about interactive queries. So queries application, not the database. Um, talk outline. Uh, first of all, I will just give a brief wrap up what Kafka Streams actually is, very short, um, because there might be people that are not familiar with Kafka Streams at all, so they're not lost in this talk. Um, then I will talk about state and about stateful stream processing. So what is state, why should we actually care, why it's important. Uh, and then I will go into a technical deep dive about interactive queries. So what does it actually provide? Um, I will go into some details about state handling within Kafka Streams, as it's important to understand how you can use interactive queries in your application. And then I will wrap up. So. Kafka Streams overview, so to put it in one sentence, Kafka Streams is the simplest way to process streams in Kafka. Um, might not be true anymore because now we have KSQL, um, but beyond that, uh, that should pretty much hold. Uh, Kafka Streams API was added in our 10 release, so about a year ago. Um, it's a powerful stream processing library, so that's a new approach to other technologies that usually have a processing cluster, and it's tightly integrated with Kafka. Um, it has an easy-to-use high-level DSL, where you can express your computation logics, your rich operators like join, aggregations, filter, and things like that. Uh, and it also has a lower-level processor API for anything the DSL does not cover, so you can build your own operators uh, to, to, to customize it if required. Uh, Kafka Streams has very rich time semantics, so we support event time, ingestion time, and processing time. And we're also able to handle out-of-order records, what is, of course, pretty important, because, as you might know, Kafka itself has strict ordering guarantees, but these ordering guarantees are based on offset. But for handling event time, it's important to be able to handle out-of-order data based on timestamp, and that is not something Kafka itself does not guarantee, but Kafka Streams adds on top. Um, I mentioned already, very powerful still, even if it's just a library, as some people put it. Um, we have aggregations, joins, windows. We have the duality between streams and tables. Um, that also allows you to do uh, joins between streams and tables. Uh, and of course, stateful processing, um, what is core of this talk. Uh, and furthermore, if you use Kafka Streams to build your application, you can build scalable, elastic, and highly available uh, applications. Uh, and that is possible because we have heard this phrase many times already, standing on the shoulder, shoulder of giants. And in this case, the giant is a Kafka cluster that we can rely on and we can, can leverage the power of the, of the cluster. Um, so what does it mean in practice? So if you build your Kafka Streams application, uh, it's a regular Java application that you package and deploy wherever you want. Uh, it's running not inside the brokers, it's running somewhere as a regular consumer, you could say. Of course, it's much richer. Uh, it connects to the Kafka cluster, forms a consumer group, also has a producer, so it reads data from Kafka and writes the result back to Kafka. And if you want to connect it to other systems, you would use Kafka Connect to import this data to Kafka and then to export to the results to, to other systems. So that was a very brief high-level overview. Um, now I want to go into stateful stream processing. So your application might have state. And the first question is, what is state actually? Uh, and to my definition, high level is basically to say anything the application needs to remember beyond the scope of one single record. So there are stateless transformations or operators in Kafka streams as well, like filter, map, flat map. For those, it's pretty easy. We have a single record. For example, in the filter case, uh, you evaluate the fields in this record, and then you can decide if you want to drop the record on the floor and filter it out, or if you want to send it downstream. And you can make this decision solely on the record itself. You don't need any context information. You also don't know if it's the first record you process or the 100,000th record, and you don't need this information. On the other hand, there are stateful operators, for example, aggregations, um, where you need some more information. For example, the count operator. If you get a single record, uh, you don't know what the count is by, by the record itself. So you need some more information that tells you what is the current count, and then you can use the current count plus the record and add one on top of that. And this count then is the state 
that your application or your operator needs to remember and hold. And this goes beyond aggregations. Uh, we also have window operations. Of course, in window operations, you want to have many records you put into one window. So the window is your state. If you do joins, you have at least two records from two different streams. So it's also beyond the scope of one single record. Or if you do more complex things like complex event processing where you want to detect some pattern in the stream, you also need more context. And why do I talk about this so uh, extensively? Well, it means that almost any, any non-trivial stream processing application will have state. State is everywhere. And for this reason, state needs to be a first-class citizen. And that has not been the case in stream processing all the time. 